Hey everyone, Arizu Gaming here, and I just wanted to talk to you guys about the foods in Oxygen Not Included spaced out today, and I'm making another tier list. So this tier list is basically me trying to quantify how I feel about all these different foods in terms of which foods give you the most quality for the amount of complexity and effort that you have to put in. Early game you're going to be running out of food and the, the scramble su for survival is there, so you're just trying to get enough food to get up your dupes to eat. It doesn't really matter what they're eating. But late game, your dupes are going to have high morale requirements. They're going to have lots of skills. And food is a really good source of morale. Um, the poor quality, the poorest quality food gives them a minus one to morale. But the highest quality food gives them a, a, a plus 16 bonus to morale. And that's huge. Plus 16 is one of the biggest sources in the game. So if you can consistently make high quality food for your dupes easily, then they're going to be able to have a lot more skills and be a lot more productive. Um, this, this tier list isn't really about resource efficiency in general. Um, you can pip plant lots of plants and grow them without resource requirements. So once you get out of the early game, eventually you will be able to generate enough food for your dupes, regardless of what resources you have available uh, once you get far enough. But yeah, I'm just going to be talking about quality and which foods I just basically think are worth making and which ones I don't usually bother with. Uh, so, yeah. To start off the tier list, <laughs> we have the Nutrient Bar. So you can't make this. Uh, it shows up in your ration box at the start. You'll find it in vending machines um, and a few points of interest around the map. It doesn't really make sense to put on the tier list. I'm going to put it in B, though. Uh, the quality is really bad, but that doesn't matter at the start of the game uh, when your dupes are eating them. And they don't go off. They never go off. So if you are running really low on foods to put in a rocket where you don't want to have to worry about them going off, putting them in a fridge or a sterile environment, you can just shove these onto your rockets that low skill dupes will be using, and then they'll have some backup food. So yeah, not really much to say really. Like your dupes are gonna have these at the start of the game and they're probably gonna eat them. And if you don't eat them, you can save them and put them on rockets later. Uh, so these other foods down here, the Muck Root, the Swamp Charred Heart, and the Hexalent, these spawn in the Terra, so Temperate Biomes, the Swampy Biomes, and the Forest Biomes, respectively, that your dupes start in. And none of these foods go off either. Um, the, the Swamp Charred Heart, the Muck Root, and the Hexalent are all grizzly food quality, um, and they don't go off. So they're very similar to the Nutrient Bar, except you will find them in the environment. Um, this is a case where, yeah, if you have a, if you're getting a lot of dupes at the start of the game, if you're printing a lot of dupes at the start of the game, you're going to be leaning on this quite heavily for your initial food, and the morale uh, doesn't matter, so that's fine for that. If you do manage to spare any, or if you find someone you're going to other planets and you you bring enough food with you, you can again store this on rockets, use it as food that doesn't go off, uh, primarily for low skilled dupe passengers. So again, I'm just going to put these in B tier. You're not growing these. They are situationally useful, very useful at the early game, and you can have a use for them late game. But to be honest, just eat them all early game, and then your dupes don't have to worry about cooking for so long. Uh, but yeah. Next up, we have all the raw ingredients. So I'm going to talk more about these later when we get to the cooked foods that your dupes are making. But essentially, my message here is that your dupes shouldn't be eating uncooked ingredients usually. Um, the food quality is worse, it's usually somewhere in the terrible to uh, poor range depending on what the food source is. So the max morale you're going to be getting out of these ingredients here is plus one, the worst is minus one. And generally all you need to do uh, is use a grill to cook them and you can improve the food quality, you can improve the amount of calories and generally you should always be doing this. If you have a relatively small number of dupes you only need one chef on a grill to cook the ingredients, get more calories out of those resources that you invested into these plants, various sources, and the food quality increases. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend just eating these raw ingredients. Lettuce is a bit of an odd case because the, the cooking recipe for this is the mushroom wrap, so you can't cook this unless you have another ingredient. And... The food quality is still comparable to these, so I'm still putting it in D tier. Your dupes, your dupes shouldn't really be eating the raw lettuce, and you shouldn't be growing raw lettuce for your dupes to eat. 
Yeah, see, it's terrible quality. Um, same with these grub fruits. Uh, the meat. Meat comes out at grizzly quality. And you can cook it very easily into barbecue, which has great quality. Um, or, let's see, yeah, good quality. So, you really... The only reason your dupes would be eating raw meat is either if you don't have a chef, or if you're producing so much food, you don't have enough chefs to cook it all on the grills. Uh, in which case, have more than one chef. If you have a large amount of dupes, have more than one chef so that... And have more than one grill, so that you can have two people doing the cooking simultaneously and get that extra workload done. But yeah, your dupes should not be eating raw meat. We'll talk more about this later. Um, then we have some raw ingredients that are exceptions to this rule. So we have the meal lice. Uh, this is grizzly quality, yes, but I'm going to put it in C tier because it is the easiest food for you to grow at the start of the game in most circumstances. The only fertilizer you need is dirt. Um, the cooked version of it is actually worse, and I'll talk more about that later. And Odds are, once you're scaling up your dupes and you're trying to get a sustainable food source going on, you're going to plant a load of these mealwoods and start eating through your colony's dirt. And that's going to solve your food for a while until you get a, a more sustainable food source. And early game, when you're doing this, the morale, pe uh, the morale penalty of the grizzly food doesn't really matter. Um, spoilage time is eight cycles. So it's a little bit better than some foods in that regard, but you still want to make sure that the grains are being stored in a sterile atmosphere like carbon dioxide, preferably in a cold environment like a frozen biome, um, or just make a fridge. You can build a refrigerator or you can make your own using thermoregulators and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm putting it in C tier because you are going to be leaning on this. It, it obviously isn't the best food long term, but you are going to have a use for it early game. Um, and it can be handy when you're just trying to get a new colony set up on a different planet and you haven't brought that much food with you if you if you find like a temperate biome or a forest biome. Particularly forest biomes where they have so much dirt, um, you can last off meal, uh, meal lice for quite a while. And then we have the, uh, the Paku fillet uh, from the Paku and the raw shellfish. So again, you really shouldn't be eating these raw ingredients. Uh, you should be cooking them for the extra um, food quality and calories. But I'm going to put these in C tier uh, because, unlike meat, the Paku fillet and raw shellfish comes out at standard quality. So that's giving the uh, that's giving the plus four morale without being cooked. So I can see circumstances where you have a massive Paku breeder tank where you've let it spin out of control, and you have so many Paku fillets that your dupes can't be bothered to cook them all, and. Cooking it does increase the calories from 1,000 to 1,600, which is a lot. But if, you, if you've if you ended up with a massive amount of Paku and you're overproducing calories anyways, cooking it to get the extra plus one quality for an extra plus four morale, it's a bit more of a subjective decision. You might not necessarily have to do it. Um, same with the raw shellfish, although you're not going to have your Santa shells overpopulating like that. But it's a bit, it's a bit of a rare case. I don't see Santa shells being used too much very often. If you have poke shells and you're you're ranching them in clean water, you'll end up with Santa shells and they'll give you the shellfish. Um, you should really be cooking this, but it's still it's still going to give you plus four morale eating it raw. So I'm not going to put it down here with the rest of these grizzly to terrible to poor ingredients. So next we have the lice loaf. So I really don't like lice loaf personally. So I'm going to put this in D tier despite meal ice being in C. And the reason for this is you're basically turning 50 kilograms of water into 500 calories early game. And I, I'm not generally that fussed about resource efficiency in the late game for food. But in the early game, it can be important because what you can end up doing, you can end up trapping yourself into a situation where your dupes are turning all of your lice into lice loaf and you end up running out of water that you need for research and then eventually oxygen. Like if you don't get a geyser hooked up in time, it's very easy to make lice loaf because it's technically more calorie efficient. But then you run out of water and you uh, and you might have to restart if you, uh, if you didn't get your geyser up in time. Um, also, the cooking time is significant with the microbe mesher and the amount of calories added is not very high. So in most circumstances, 
unless you're playing on a map that has an absolutely pitiful amount of dirt, I would just recommend planting 50% more mealwoods instead. You'll use 50% more dirt, but the dirt the dirt will last a bit longer than the water will. And you don't have and your dupes will be spending that time raising the plants instead of cooking the food. I just don't think there's a strong enough use case of making ice loaf early game. But let me know in the comments if you disagree. I just I just feel like it's a trap and it doesn't usually benefit your colony over just planting more mealwood or switching to other food sources. Also, if you're using germy water, your dupes will get food poisoning from the lice loaves uh, and then they're going to be less efficient. And this happens a lot and it's kind of hard to keep track of. So if you're not making the lice loaf, it's just one less thing to keep track of in the early game. So overall, I don't recommend it. I wouldn't ever bother with it personally. Um, then we have pickled meal. So pickled meal is a bit of an interesting case because um, it adds cook time but it doesn't add calories but what it does do is it changes the changes the storage spoilage time to let's see where is it yeah here it is it's still grizzly but it changes the storage time to 32 cycles which is significantly better um so if you're in a circumstance where your food is starting to go off you can make this in a pinch and it will it will preserve the food for longer if you've run out of non-perishable foods for your rocket, um, you can make pickled meal early on, put it in a rocket, and it will last generally long enough that you're not going to have too many issues with it. Like if you stick it in a in a normal refrigerator that's just powered off the rocket's solar power, and you put that in the bottom of the rocket so it's maybe in a little bit of carbon dioxide, it can last long enough for your rocket travel, and it's not bad. The food quality still isn't good, and adding cook time without adding calories early game is also a bit of a trap. You shouldn't be doing this, generally. You should just be storing your food in a place where it's not going off, or just not overproducing food. Because if you're overproducing food, that means your dupes are spending more time cooking when they could be doing other stuff like digging or building or researching, all the really important early game stuff, and then the food's going off anyways. Um, and to avoid that, your dupes then cooking it into pickled meal. So you don't want to end up in a circumstance where your dupes are doing nothing but making pickled meal. You want your dupes to make less food and then get on with everything else it needs doing. But I'm going to put it in C tier. It does have a use. It, it can be situationally useful for rockets. So I'll put it there. And then we move on to um, some of the more interesting cooked foods. So this is where I'm going to start talking about the logistics of the actual plants and the food sources now. So bristleberry. You get this from bristle blossoms and you just cook it on a grill and the food comes out at standard quality i think no it comes out at poor quality so you're still only getting the plus one uh morale from this but cooking it increases the calories from 1600 to 2000 so that's not bad storage time is eight cycles so that's not bad Bristle blossoms are pretty good in cases where you don't have a lot of dirt, but you do have a lot of water. It's far more water efficient to grow the bristle berries than to make lice loaves. Um, and the plants also, the plants also actually produce the floral scent germs, which is pretty good. If your dupes don't have allergies, then this reduces the stress of the dupes who are wandering near the farms, and those germs can spread quite far. In oxygen so it can make your whole base smell nice um so if you have the water it's worth doing there are some maps where you start with a lot of water the plant is also quite um cold resistant if we have a look at the bristle blossom it grows uh, down to about five degrees c so on rhyme maps it can be a bit easier to grow these um at that lower limit and again, in maps where you have lots of ice, but uh, you can melt the ice, and then if you heat it up just a little bit more with like a, a tepidizer or, or something, then you'll have lots of water that you can use to feed these. And this can last you a really long time. Like just the gristleberry. I, I frequently end up using the gristleberry sort of mid-game as a food source if I have lots of water and I don't have lots of ranches up yet. Um, can be quite handy. And the bristleberry is used for other food recipes and recreational buildings. So they are worth having around in general. 
um, if you don't have allergic dupes. If you have allergic dupes, send them to a planet where you don't have bristle blossoms or similar plants. Yeah, I like the bristleberry. It's bristly. Um, and one thing I would say is, it sometimes the function of consuming water is handy. Um, I'm going to talk about this more for other foods, but there have been cases where I have a bathroom that's being plugged into a water sieve, and I don't have any plants on the colony that can actually consume polluted water, like thimble reeds, arbor trees, bog buckets. And in those cases, you can take the filtered sieve output, you can, you can filter the excess bathroom water, turn it into regular germy water, and then feed it to bristle blossoms. It's not amazing, because you do need a light for the bristle blossoms to grow. So you are you are wasting you are using power to consume the excess fluid from your bathroom loop. But you do get the food. It's it's not awful food. It will do in a pinch where you don't have plants that just consume polluted water on their own. And in cases where you don't want to set up a pinch of pepper in your bathroom because that because the pinch of pepper needs to be above 35 degrees C, and you're worried about the rest of your base getting hot. But that's a bit of a tangent anyways. But yeah, overall I like bristleberries. Uh, fried mushrooms. I'm going to put these in B, uh, in B tier as well. So the quality is not good. Again, it's plus one. Um, the calories go up from 2,400 per mushroom to 2,800. So it's not as large of a percentage increase. Uh, but the reason I'm rating it quite highly is because mushrooms consume slime as their input material. The dust caps grow in quite cold environments. Uh, they don't need light. In fact, you can't have light with them. You do need uh, a carbon dioxide atmosphere, but that's pretty easy to get. And again, the dust cap is quite a cold resistant plant going down to about five degrees C. It does grow up to 35 degrees C, so there's a little bit more heat leeway than with the uh, mealwoods and the bristle blossoms but you're generally not coming into this upper limit. But the reason I'm putting the fried mushroom in B tier is because you're usually just going to want to consume your slime. If you're digging slime up on the map, it's usually going to be covered in slime on germs that you don't really want to off, uh, you don't want the slime to off gas and let those germs out into polluted oxygen and then have your dupes get slime lung. It's not the end of the world, but it is annoying. Um, so it's quite handy having a plant where once you mine the slime, piles. If you mine them and drop them into water, they won't off-gas, and then the, the germs will just be contained under the slime themselves. And then your dupes could just take the slime, bring it to your mushroom farms, put it in the farm tiles, or you can even have an auto-sweeper do it if you really want. Uh, like, you can have a sweepy on the bottom of the of the bit where uh, the slime is coming out. If, I'm going on a bit of a tangent here now, <laughs> but... Uh, if you have a high pressure gas, if you pressurize the room where the slime tiles are with a lot of gas, you dig the tiles out, you have a sweepy on the bottom, slime won't off gas in a high pressure gas environment, the sweepy will collect all of the all of the slime, and then you can conveyor it to you can conveyor it to your mushroom farms, where the slime will be consumed and it'll produce mushrooms that don't have germs. And this allows you to handle all the germs from the, from the slime without your dupes ever touching it. So, I like these plants, and I and I do occasionally build mushroom farms just to consume this slime and turn it into something useful that's not a hazard. But there are other ways of dealing with germs on slime. You can irradiate it, you can you can cool it down, you can heat it up. But I do still find myself doing this in a mid-game. Also, if you're ranching tufts, if you have a if you had a good polluted oxygen source, like a polluted water vent that's off-gassing constantly and you're ranching puffs because you want the oxalate from dense puffs or something, uh, the puffs will produce a lot of slime. So you can grow these, you can grow these indefinitely if you have the puffs. Um, yeah, pretty interesting food source. Does have uses in mid-game, obviously not an end-game product, but I do find myself going for this occasionally. We're going to get to the higher tiers later. I'm saving these for a few specific foods. But yeah, moving on, we have Swampy Delights. So again, this is in a similar situation. So the bog bucket, if we go over to that, give me a second. Yeah, so the bog bucket grows between 10 and 30 degrees C. You find them in the swampy biomes. 
Those biomes are absolutely full of polluted water that gets in the way and makes digging really annoying and off gases to produce lots of polluted oxygen that you don't really want in the early game. Or you want the clean oxygen, you, you have to clean it. It's, it's just a bit of a logistical nightmare, <laughs> which is the whole point of the swampy biome, I suppose. Um, but these plants consume just polluted water and they produce the bog jellies, which have a pretty decent amount of calories in them. And then you cook them into swampy delights we just go down here. So yeah, all the Swampy Delights require is the Bog Jelly. It goes up by 400 calories again, to 2,240 each. Poor quality. Um, but yeah, again, it's one of these mid-tier foods. And you're gonna, you will find yourself making this a lot early on in Swampy Biomes. Because you want to consume the excess polluted water so that your dupes can actually move around everywhere. Um, it's, it's just so abundant, you can consume it for ages and not worry about food. And it's this is a really good way of turning polluted water directly into food. Um, so, in those circumstances, I do tend to go for this early game. But obviously it is a poor quality food, you're only getting plus one morale from it. So, not really something you need to consider late game. But it does have its use, so that's why it's going here with these other plants that consume things that you don't really want to deal with or have other benefits. Um, and then similarly in that vein, we have the omelette. Uh, so omelettes are kind of interesting. Um, oh. I've lost the page. Um, yeah, so omelettes are standard quality. So you're starting to get the better food quality. You get plus four morale. That's pretty good. And you're just cooking raw egg uh, to make these omelettes. And what I tend to find that I do is if I have ranches um, and they produce critter variants occasionally that I don't want, like say I'm I'm ranching like stone hatches to eat a volcano output and we occasionally get sage hatches just by random chance, what I might do is I might just have an egg crusher where someone goes in and grabs the sage hatch eggs and then crushes them and then we make omelettes and that prevents, that stops us from accumulating a hatch type that we don't want. Um, so I end up making omelettes that way. Food quality is pretty good um, compared to these other foods that uh, you generally get from like dealing with waste products. So I think this goes above these, but I'm still going to keep it in B tier. I do incidentally find myself making these, but for reasons I'm going to go into later, it's not usually going to be your main food source from ranches. Um, there is a better food source. Um, but one interesting quirk about omelettes is it's it you do need a grill to cook the raw egg uh, as a dupe task, but you don't actually need a grill because raw egg will state change into omelette mass for mass um, at 75 degrees C. <laughs> so what you can do is if you have a large amount of raw egg for whatever reason, um, you can you can just dump that by a conveyor into a hot room like near a natural gas vent or a hydrogen vent or a steam room. And you, it will just cook the omelettes for you. So this is a cooked food that doesn't actually require any dupe cooking whatsoever. You don't need a chef. Um, so in cases where you have a really large amount of dupes and they're not overly skilled, um, it can be worthwhile instead of instead of harvesting meat from the critters and cooking it all into barbecue manually, um, just crushing like taking take the eggs, letting them spoil in a room. Um, so they crack into the raw egg on their own by not being viable. And then cook that into omelette directly. And then you have a, a plus two, like a standard quality food source that requires no no dupe interaction whatsoever. Um, I haven't done this, but I could see it being potentially useful. So <laughs> let me know if you've uh, done any shenanigans with omelettes in the comments. So... Next up, first A tier food in my opinion, uh, grub fruit preserve. This is like the this is like the big brother to me, uh, the pickled meal. So I'm putting this in A tier because, first of all, compared to the, the normal grub fruits that you make, it goes up to plus three. It goes up to good quality, so it's plus eight morale, which is starting to get significant. Um, and all you really need to do to make this is have some grub fruit, i.e. You have the you have the grub root plants planted. You're feeding them sulfur, and then you have sweetles, 
who are tending to the plants, also eating the sulfur, and then turning them into grub fruit plants. And then you just need to combine that with a with a pretty small amount of sucrose. Um, and sucrose is produced from grub grubs. I realized, yeah, here you go. <laughs> so sucrose is produced from grub grubs, um, which are a divergent from sweetles that you just get after sweetles tend plants. As they tend the plants, you'll get more grub grub eggs. Um, so it's pretty easy to have a setup where you have sulfur coming in. You have like a ranch full of sweetles, a ranch full of grub grubs. They're all tending the grub fruit plants and you're able to make grub fruit preserve pretty consistently. Um, so A, this food is good quality. B, the food, the ingredients all come from one closed system that's pretty easy to look after. And C, the spoil time is 32 cycles like the pickled meal. So this will last a very long time. It is a pretty good space food. Um, it's not the best. Uh, I'll go into that later. But um, if you put it in a refrigerator or a carbon dioxide atmosphere, it will last long enough for most of your needs. And um, yeah, the other reason I like this as well is if you have a sulfur geyser um, and you can cool down that sulfur, then it is a sustainable food source uh, into the long into the long term into the end game. Because normally you're going to run out of sulfur just mining the wasteland biomes uh, to do this. But if you find a sulfur geyser, it go it, it, it becomes like a viable long-term food. Because ultimately, you're going to want to process that sulfur through grub grubs into mud. And then getting dirt and water from that for everything else you need. And as a result of that process, which you're going to be doing anyways, taming the sulfur geyser, you're going to end up with the grub fruit reserve. The only thing is, you need to make sure to save a little bit of uh, sucrose so that you're, it's not all being eaten by your grub grubs. In my current Flip Farters run, um, the grub grubs are eating all of the sucrose and we're not making any of this. Um, but that's all right, because we're, we're just making loads of barbecue. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, pretty good space food. Um, can be worth making. You do often end up with it just by doing sulfur management. Uh, so I do recommend this as a food source. Um, late game. Uh, then we have the roast grub fruit nuts. Uh, these are going in C tier. Uh, you shouldn't really be bothering with these. Um, they are poor quality for a cooked food. It does increase the amount of calories you get from the spinning grub fruit significantly. So it is useful early game when you're planting these plants but you don't have the sweetles around yet. If you're just trying to use the sulfur on the map to grow food. Um, these definitely have a use. In fact, actually, I'm going to put these in B tier. Uh, with the other situationally useful foods. Because, um, yeah, one thing about the grub fruit plants as well is they're very heat tolerant. So if I go, if I go here, so yeah, I'll just show me the plant. So the grub fruit plant will grow from 15 to 50 degrees C. Um, so that's quite a lot hotter than most plants normally grow at, especially for food plants. So if you're playing on a video and the whole map is over 30 degrees C and you can't plant your uh, meal ice anywhere, uh, this is actually pretty handy because you can plant, you can, you can beeline it to a wasteland biome, dig up all the sulfur, dig up all the, the grub fruit seeds and plant a load of spit in the grub fruit plants and then just eat the nuts and that could be a good early game alternative food source to meal ice until you get your ranches online. Um, and the calorie efficiency does increase a lot through cooking it. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna put this at like the bottom of B tier because it's definitely not as good as these other food sources. You should generally be prioritizing making the, the grub fruit preserve from the better grub fruit plants. Um, but you are, you are sometimes going to be making this just because it's so heat tolerant and it's easy if you have the sulfur. But yeah, pretty, um, yeah, pretty interesting option. Definitely worth considering if you're having heat problems compared to meal ice. And it is cooked, so the quality is slightly better than meal ice. The morale bonus isn't much, but it is there. Yeah, pretty interesting option. Uh, mush fries and mush bars. So these are not good. Uh, these are emergency foods that you make when you literally can't grow anything and you only have dirt and water. Uh, so if we go up here. So... Each mush bar is turning 75 kilograms of dirt and water into 800 calories of 
terrible uh, grizzly quality food. It's not good. And you could put this in the you could put this in the grill and go up to 1050. You're not even getting the normal 400 extra calories from grilling this. You're only getting 250. So your dupes are basically turning a lot of their time and all of their raw resources that they would be using for growing plants into these foods, um, which is not good because you end up burning through these resources way quicker than you would if you just if you were just able to grow the plants. Um, so I'm going to put these in D tier. You should only be making these in like a worst case scenario where you just don't have any seeds or you can't grow any more food. But realistically, in those circumstances, you should just be digging the map. Dig the map, find buried objects, find the muck root, find the excellent, find the swamp chard. And eat that instead until you can get a normal growing food source up and running. Because you're just going to burn through your raw resources with this, and you're going to and you're going to burn through your dupes' time cooking it inefficiently as well. And you're just going to—it's just not a good practice, I would say. Like, just dig instead, print less dupes so that you're not running out of running out of calories. Um, yeah, just just don't bother. Uh, so then we have, oh, the bog jelly. Oh, this should go in the ingredients with all the others. I've already talked about the swampy delights and the bog jelly. Um, so now we're moving on to some more interesting foods. Um, so we've got the stuffed berry. So you make this in the gas range and you use the, the, uh, the bristle berry. Yeah, so you use the gristle berry that you cooked earlier and you combine it with a little bit of pinch of pepper nut and it gives you a few extra calories, but the main benefit is it goes up to great quality. So now, instead of getting the, um, hold on. Yeah, now instead of getting the plus one morale from the gristle berry, you're now getting plus 12 morale from the stuffed berry. That is a huge difference. And all it takes is a pinch of pepper nut um, and a gas range. So you do need, you do need some natural gas either from a vent or through some oil wells or something. It's not a lot, but you do need a little bit. Um, so that is a little bit of a, a caveat. But if you have a natural gas vent, you usually have a natural gas vent on a lot of the bigger asteroids. Um, so this usually isn't that much of a problem to get the gas range online. At least not from my experience. <laughs> not counting the run where we have loads of flatulent dupes and they're all just producing a natural gas for the gas range on their own. Uh, but the pinch of pepper nut plant, all that needs to grow is um, pollutive water. It doesn't require a huge amount of pollutive water. You do need a little bit of phosphorite as well to fertilize it. But odds are you're going to have Drecos that are producing the phosphorite for you. Drecos also eat the pinch of pepper nuts. So you can just have a Dreco ranch where they're eating the pinch of pepper nuts. And then you'll have the pinch of pepper nuts. You can have some excess for your food. And then you're having the Drecos keeping the room warm so that it stays at this sort of 35C range. The, having the regular Drecos for this is important because yeah, they keep it warm and they're the ones that eat these plants. Um, otherwise, just find polluted water from a, a vent and heat it up just by running it past your industrial machinery. Um, or you can even put it in a metal refinery for like one use and then send it to your pinch of pepper nuts at about 80C. And that will still work, sending it to like an insulated Draco ranch that way. I've done a run, I've done a run where we got steel by cycle 40 by putting a a metal refinery in an insulated Draco ranch, feeding polluted water from the map into that for one time use, and then feeding the polluted water out of that into the pinch of pepper plants, and then feeding the Dracos with the pinch of pepper plants. So we were making steel, we were making reed fiber, and we were making pinch of pepper nuts so that we had high quality food. So I'm, I'm going to have to do that again on a new run just to show you guys because it, it's a really it's a really powerful early game build. Um, but yeah, it's not too hard to make. And if you don't have the polluted water, you can wild plant these with pips. Um, they can crawl in the ceiling and plant these. I think they can anyway. I don't. I don't think I've ever actually done that. Maybe that needs some fact checking. Let me know in the comments if you can pip plant these. Um, I feel like you can because the pip can plant and crawl all over the ceiling. But I've never actually done it because the polluted water is usually available. Yeah, let me know. But 
overall, if we go back to the if we go back to the food itself, so yeah, it goes up to plus four quality. That like that's plus eleven morale, and it's relatively easy to get. So I'm gonna put this in A tier with the Brotherhood Reserve. Pretty good end game food if you have water and polluted water in excess. It's pretty easy to make, and it will keep your dupes happy enough for most things. Okay. So moving on, we have the uh, we have the big one. We have the my favorite food sources in the game, and this probably isn't a surprise, and I've been alluding to it all video. Uh, we have barbecue. This is going in S tier, um, and the reason for that is. You're going to be making it regardless of what you're doing normally. So, barbecue, you're, you're taking the meat from your ranches. Like, you might have your, your hatches, your hatch ranches, your Dreco ranches, your pit ranches, whatever you're doing to get your resources that you need for other things. You're going to have excess critters, and they're going to be dying, and they're going to be leaving you meat. Um, often what you'll do, instead of making omelettes, is, the, is you'll just have the critters uh, hatch normally in a drowning chamber or something so that when they hatch a critter sensor goes off floods the room the little babies drown and you get the meat out of them immediately uh, then you just need to grill that meat and it goes from minus one grizzly to plus three good so you're getting eight morale from the barbecue the calories go up by 800 calories per kilogram so that's a lot of difference the spoil time is pretty bad so you need to have you do need to have an actual freezer where stuff is deep stored usually um because you're going to end up overproducing it um but if you can get that freezer online you can have a massive stockpile of plus three um quality plus eight morale food uh, just from stuff that you're doing unrelated to actual food production you're just going to end up with it incidentally it's good enough for your dupes most of the time um i highly recommend it to be honest most of my runs I try and get to the point where we're just feeding our dupes off of barbecue alone um, and don't have dedicated farms. It like then just do the critter ranching instead. It's it's that good. It let, it kind of lets you just bypass the food game entirely. The only caveat being you do need proper food storage because it spoils quickly. But I don't think it makes sense to put it anywhere other than S tier. Um, cooked seafood goes in the same place, but this also goes in S tier. Pakus are one of the best food sources in the game. Once you get a Paku breeding tank up and running, which can be very quick, it could happen in the first 50, 100 cycles if you want, you'll start producing excess Pakus that can sustain themselves. They can, they can lay an egg before they die, even if they're unhappy, so long as they're not cramped. And then, and then you're just going to end up with all of this cooked seafood the, the, the raw Paku fillets can be eaten on their own anyways, and they're still they're still plus four morale. But cooking them brings it up to plus eight. You get an extra 600 calories per fillet, so that's an extra 60% calories, which is significant. Um, and you get, and yeah, it's it's the plus three good food. So it's the same as the barbecue. Your dupe's going to get plus eight morale from eating this. And it's, it's very easy to just set up a Paku system and forget about it and just have your dupes just end up eating loads of cooked seafood um it's not something you're gonna it is something that you're doing intentionally uh whereas the barbecue you can just end up accumulating it passively through your other projects but it is worth doing especially on asteroids where there aren't water sources and you need food uh because the pakus once they're tame you don't need to feed them you can just have them flopping around in their little water tank or whatever whatever tank you want um, and you don't need to feed them. No inputs required, free food. What I also like to do as well, um, this is actually something in favor of the, the Paku fillet. Um, I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually going to bring the Paku fillet up to D tier, or up to B tier, um, for a very silly reason. If you don't have, if you don't want to make perishable foods for your rockets, you can dump Paku eggs in your rockets. You can just have like 100 Paku flopping around on the ground. Um, and the Paku will stay alive and then you can just murder them you don't need a grill or anything and you'll have the plus two standard food which gives plus four morale and the food won't start going off until you murder the Pakus so you can have your dupe on your rocket for like 100 cycles with all the with, uh, with all the Pakus that are laying eggs etc while they're flopping around 
And then you can, whenever the dupe's hungry, they can just go and you can just get them to eat a Paku. You can just get them to kill the Paku and eat the raw fillet. Um, I'm not sure that's good enough to put it in B tier. I'm going to bring it back to C tier, but it's it's a use case. Like usually, I would just make a better storage storing food instead. But if you don't have those options and you do have Paku, you can consider that for your rockets. Um, but yeah, cooked seafood is great. Um, probably the best dedicated food source in the game in terms of it's really easy to set up and the food quality is good enough for most things. Uh, so then, <laughs> in the similar vein to that, we have the Surf and Turf. This is also going in S tier. And to be honest, I'm going to put this at the top of S tier. Because all you need to do is combine barbecue from your ranches, which you're going to have anyways most of the time, with your Paku tank. You just combine the barbecue and the cooked fish uh, in the gas range. The gas is pretty easy to come by. You'll get it from your natural gas vent. You'll get it from your flatulent dupes if you have any. You'll get it from um, your oil wells. You will end up with natural gas, and the natural gas vents are common. Um, and then you end up with plus four quality. You end up with great food instead of good food. So that increases from plus eight to plus twelve. That's another four morale just for combining these ingredients. Um, so this is what I tend to do for like my my end food resource that the high skill dupes are eating. So they're getting the plus 12, no taste dupes with the no taste trait will get the full plus 16 max bonus from eating surf and turf. So if you have no taste dupes, that's great. They're still getting value out of that trait with this food. Um, and again, you just need to put it in a, in a freezer because it goes off relatively quickly. But yeah, I think this is definitely the easiest plus four food to make, uh, mass produce for a large amount of dupes. Um, so I highly recommend it. Uh, so then we had the Frost Burger, which is a little bit of an anomaly. So now I'm talking about foods that involve lettuce, and I'm talking about making them long term. So let's have a chat about lettuce first. So lettuce comes from water weeds, and the water weeds take salt water for irrigation, and you fertilize them with bleach stone. Um, so bleach stone is a pretty rare resource um, that comes in very limited quantities in your asteroids. And once you run out, you can't you can't farm these anymore in your hydroponics tiles. Uh, you have to go into space to mine bleach stone, or you have to ranch squeaky puffs, which requires a chlorine source like rusty oxidizers or a chlorine vent. And it can be difficult to get that set up. And if you're making the bleach stone from that process, there is now a better use case for bleach stone than making water weed. It's it's geotuning. Like, would you rather make a food that does similar things? Uh, would you rather make lettuce and make mushroom wraps or frost burgers that are foods that do things that you can achieve with surf and turf and other other higher quality foods if you really need that? Or are you going to use the bleach stone to geotune your water geysers and get loads of extra water, make your cool steam vents way easier to tame and end up with more dupes to do more things? Or are you gonna make the water weed? I feel like I feel like I'm gonna make the I'm gonna do the geotuning every time nowadays. Before they added that, I think I think water weed was a pretty decent payoff to the the chlorine chlorine route because you can end up making the the max quality food and it's an interesting thing to do. But now I don't think I would ever bother with this. So so yeah, I don't rate lettuce foods particularly highly. The alternative to that is pit planting the lettuce, but. If you're making a big pit branch, pit, pit planted branches, uh, pit planted farms take a lot of space because the wild plants don't grow very quickly and you need to space them out for the pips to plant them properly. So it's taking up a lot of real estate on your asteroids to wild farm lettuce. Do you want to take up all that space with a lettuce farm or do you want to do something else? It's 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 pros and cons. Sometimes it can be worth it, sometimes it, it it's not worth it. But it's it's a decision making process and like it's there are better foods without caveats uh, that I would just go for instead. But anyways, going back to the frost burger. So this gives you the plus six ambrosial food. So this gives your dupes 16 morale in all circumstances, even if they're fussy eaters. Notably not that much higher than the plus 12 you get from surf and turf. Um, and you need the barbecue. 
You need frost buns, uh, which requires sleep wheat, which I'll get into later. This isn't a huge constraint. Um, and then lettuce as well. Uh, just a little bit of lettuce, but enough that you're going to have to set up a farm for it and it's going to be mildly annoying. And the thing about the frost burger is um, you're you're getting this food that has the max morale and it does give a, a good stress relief bonus. So if you've got really highly skilled dupes and they're in a situation where they're going to stress out because they're not getting enough morale, um, like even with the food bonus, this does help them avoid getting stressed. Like if so, if you've got like a, a really high skill dupe going on a rocket, and they need to stay on the rocket for a while, and you can't get the morale high enough, you can fill the rocket with frost burgers in a in a refrigerator, and help keep their stress down. But I generally find you don't need to do this. Like you can just get you can just skill scrub the dupe, send them on the rocket, and then reactivate their skills when they get back on the other planet. Or you can just put them on a sleep only schedule so they just sleep in the bed the whole time and get that stress reduction bonus. They don't necessarily need to be doing anything on the rocket. And the other thing is, the dupe also gets minus two athletics. And this isn't a big deal for late game dupes that already have really high athletic skills. Um, and they can eat that penalty. But you don't want to be feeding your low skill dupes frost burgers because they don't need the extra morale. And the minus athletics will hurt their productivity. So overall, I just find this to be um, a big investment in resources and planning. Like you've got to have a you've got to have a farm for your lettuce, you've got to have the, the, the bleach stone source for that, or you've got to have a big wild farm. You've got to get the sleep wheat going for that as well, which um, is either going to be a large temperature controlled product uh, project, or you're going to wild plant that and it's going to take up a load of space that you'd rather use and you'd rather use the sleep wheat for other foods. So to be honest, I'm gonna put this in C tier. Um, and I'm gonna put this like I'm gonna put this like here. I I generally don't make frost burgers, and I think everything the frost burger tries to do, you're better off doing something else. But it's kind of sad because it's like the flagship food. It's like the 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 best food in terms of quality. But I just don't think it's ever worth prioritizing. Uh, so then we have the mushroom wrap, which is in kind of a similar position. Um, I'm going to put this in C tier as well, but slightly higher. So this does give you the plus four quality, so it's plus 12 morale. And you take the mushrooms that, uh, from earlier that are eating all the slime, and you combine that with the lettuce to make a plus four food in the gas range. Um, I don't tend to make these that much, but it, the logistics is a little bit easier, because if you're making mushrooms permanently, then you've probably got puffs producing slime. Which means you, you've already got pretty easy access to squeaky puffs, which means you're probably going to be making bleach stone to just fertilize your lettuce. So you have just the puff branch set up with both types of puffs, um, and then you just have you just have the normal planted uh, farms instead of the wild wild setups that require pips. Um, so it's 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 a little bit of investment, but it's not bad. I think I might actually put this at the bottom of B tier. Because plus 12 morale is good. Um, there are easier ways to get it, but if you're already doing mushrooms, it, it can be worth it is it is worth dipping into that as a late game option, potentially. But I don't know. I think I'd still just end up making surf and turf instead, even if I did have mushrooms. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it in top of C tier. There you go. Um, so yeah, those are the lettuce foods. Then we have the frost bun. So this just takes sleep wheat grains. Um, you take three sleep wheat grains and you get a plus two food out of it. Um, and what I'm going to do with this food is I'm going to put this in B tier. I am actually, you know what, sorry, I'm, I'm changing my mind. That goes back in B tier. I'm going to put the frost bun in B tier as well. I'm going to put it like, um, below the grub fruit nuts. You generally want to save your sleep wheats for better foods, but early game frost buns can end up being relevant. If you're on a map like Arborio, where you have large amounts of frozen biomes that have lots of carbon dioxide pockets that just have wild sleep wheat growing in it normally, after 72 cycles, you will end up with a pretty decent stockpile of wild sleep wheat grains that are being preserved by the, um, the cold CO2 in those biomes if you've looked after them. So it's a little, it's, if you leave those plants uh, untouched, 
you can end up with quite a large wild like stockpile of wild sleep wheat grains that you can use for food. And if you have an emergency, you can cook those sleep wheat grains directly into frost buns. Sometimes you can do this earlier in the game as well if if you come across a plant that's already pretty far into its growth cycle at the start of the game and make some frost buns to help get over that initial food uh, situation. It can be worth doing. I don't tend to like really significantly prioritize it, but it is an option. Um, but there's some better options. <laughs> so moving on to pepper bread. Uh, this is another food that I'm going to put in A tier. Uh, so I'm going to put that here. So pepper bread is combining the frost buns with... Well, it's not combining the frost buns. You're, you're taking the sleep wheat grains and you're combining it with the pinch pepper nut. And that goes all the way up to plus five. So that's giving your dupes the plus 16 morale, which is the max bonus. Um, unless, they're, unless they're the fussy eaters, in which case they won't get it. But this is like, in terms of if you're absolutely trying to max out your dupes morale, this will get them there if they're not fussy eaters. Um, the sleep wheat, either you're finding it wildly and you're, and you're combining it with either the wild pinch of pepper nuts or stuff that you're growing yourself to make this. You can end up making a little bit of this just from wild ingredients if you look after those biomes. Um, but I think it can actually be worth prioritizing, like setting up a sleep wheat grain farm where the water is cooled and it's all kept at the low temperature, combining it with the pinch of pepper nuts that you could potentially be heating the polluted water with an aqua tuna that's cooling the water for the sleep wheat grains. You can combine it pretty neatly. And it's just the plants and the gas range. So it's pretty easy to get the plus five off of this. And you may also end up just wild planting your sleep wheats with pips. It does take up a lot of space, but you're gonna want you may eventually want to do that anyways for another food source I'll talk about in a minute. So if you have excess uh, sleep wheat or you just want to grow a large amount of it, you can split your wild sleep wheat grains in those farms between um, the berry sludge, which I'll talk about in a minute, and the pepper bread. So, yeah, um, pretty good source that I do occasionally make and you do get a lot of morale from it. So I think it makes sense to put it in A tier. It's a pretty good late game food, pretty easy to make. Um, you'll make it on your way to other things anyways. So I like it a lot. Then we have mixed berry pie. So this is a, this is a relatively new food. Um, and what you need to do with this is you need to combine sleep wheat grub fruit and gristle berries um and you get the plus five so it's it's pretty good um plus five food with the 16 morale is nothing to sniff at it is all just plants um the sleep if you're making this with sleep wheat from a pit planted farm you don't need as much farm space to make this as you do pepper bread um if you have the sweetles and grub grubs and you're feeding them a sulfur geyser you'll have the grub fruit so you can make that and then gristle berry is very easy to make. So it's more or less just a case of where if you've got the sweetles and grub grubs available to do stuff, this is the end product for your, for your grub fruits. I, I still think the grub fruit reserve is more useful in general because the morale bonus is good enough. And just the fact that it doesn't spoil as easily makes it useful for rocket travel and things. But this is a pretty good payoff as well. I don't really know where to put it. I'm going to put this in B tier as well, but I think above. I think above some of these other options. I think I'm going to put it above the uh, the nutrient bar stuff. Um, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good end food. I definitely prefer making. I prefer making this to the the frost burgers, but that's mostly because I'm making sleep wheat for the berry sludge, rather than making uh, wild plants and lettuce. So it's just something I'm going to come across more often than the Frost Burger. And, and it doesn't have the athletics penalty, which is nice. But yes, finally, the last S tier food, Berry Sludge. I'm going to put this at the bottom of S tier because it is a bit more situational than these other foods. You do have to dedicate resources to it, but it's so good. So if we go here, so it's good quality. So you get the plus eight morale, which is usually good enough for what you need to do. Uh, it's the bristle berries, so you don't need to grill the bristle berries, just, just have the normal bristle berries available without cooking them. 
you take the sleep wheat grains, which you might you may either just have in your frozen biomes or in a dedicated farm. Um, and you can buy them in a micro musher to make the berry sludge, which has a large amount of calories and it never goes off. This this food is a food that you can make but never goes off at all. So this makes it the best space food long term because you can just shove a million calories of it in your rockets and it's never going to go off and your dupes are always going to have food. The main issue is just making the sleep wheat. Um, and if you pit plant this, you can just have a large wild farm where it's just kept at a nice cool temperature. It's not consuming any water or dirt or anything. And it just makes the... Just makes the... Oh, it does It does consume a little bit. Well, it, it won't consume the dirt if it's wild planted. That's the whole point. So if you wild plant it, it's not consuming dirt. It's not consuming water. You just need to keep it cool with a coolant pipe. Have some auto sweepers occasionally bring out the sleep weed. Or, if you have loads of frozen biomes, just let it accumulate in those frozen biomes over time and grab the grains occasionally. You use it to make berry sludge. Like, I've done this on runs. Like, we've just raided the frozen biomes occasionally for wild sleepy grains and used them to make berry sludge really early on. And just telling all of our dupes not to eat it, but stockpiling it up so that when we do space travel, we have like 100,000 or 200,000 calories of berry sludge just waiting for us to grab. Um, and do space travel with it's 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 so it's actually quite easy on those maps of those frozen biomes to get it early on it's the best space food because it doesn't spoil and it has the good food qualities it's plus eight morale so really really worth prioritizing um if i'm making a pit planted farm most of the sleep wheat is going to be going into this i might have some of it go into pepper bread or mixed berry pie if i want a higher quality morale food um for the main base but most of it's going to be going into this because rocket food is invaluable. And we already have good morale food in the Surf and Turf. It's not as good as these two, but it's it's good enough for most dupes. Um, so then the last foods we have on here, um, these are all nosh bean based. So tofu, you make it in the in the micro mesher. And it just requires nosh beans and water, and it has a large amount of calories. It's way more efficient than the the life slow. And it's plus two quality, so it, it gives the, the full morale, so it's, it's not amazing. Uh, but the main quirk is the Nosh Sprout. So this is another plant that needs cold temperatures to grow in, like minus 25 to zero degrees. And you fertilize it, uh, you fertilize it with dirt and you irrigate it with ethanol. Um, so if you're trying to grow this in an intensive farm, you need an ethanol source, which means you need a tree farm, which is consuming polluted water, and then you need to have ethanol distillers turning that lumber into ethanol. And then you've got to deal with the polluted dirt and the carbon dioxide for that. It's a big mess. <laughs> so you're probably going to be wild planting these with, with pits. Um, you tend to find these in rust biomes and they don't tend to be growing as much. I find it a bit harder to utilize wild nosh sprouts than wild sleep wheats. Just because they end up spoiling a bit easier. Um, but if you do pit plant them, you can grow these and you can make tofu. But the main quirk, the main query I have about that is if you're if you're wild planting stuff in a cold environment with pits, why aren't you just doing it with sleep wheat so that you can make berry sludge, which is the best late game rocket food? So I don't rate it super highly. I think I'm gonna put this. I think I'm gonna put this in C tier. Um, the spicy tofu is a little bit better. Um, combining it with the pinch of pepper plant, uh, pinch of pepper nut is all it takes to bring up to plus five. Um, I think it's quite easy to get it to that stage. So I think I'm going to have that be like a, a B tier food again as well. I'm going to put that with the mixed berry pie. Um, the main reason I'm not putting it higher is because I think you're just going to prioritize the pepper bread over the spicy tofu every time because you want the sleep wheat farming capacity for your berry sludge. You're not going to want to dedicate that space to Nosh Sprouts and have it just be useful for food when you could have it be useful for, for base food and rocket food. Um, it's it's definitely not a bad option, but I, I, I just don't think you would do it unless you didn't have the frozen biomes, unless you didn't have any um, sleep wheat and you only had Nosh Sprouts. Um, yeah, maybe I'm being a bit harsh now. I'm going to put it above the pie. Um, yeah, generally I don't prioritize this 
because if you yeah the wild planting you're better off doing it with the sleep wheat and if you're growing it intensively it's a big production line for something you don't need a big production line for and then in a similar vein we have the curried beans so this is another relatively new recipe um all you need is the nosh beans and then tonic root from delecta bowls so ranching shove bowls can be kind of fiddly you have to keep them in the in special metal tiles or doors etc so they don't roam out into the rest of your base and make a mess of your pots and pans um but you can get the tonic root from the delecta bowls and then it's it's a pretty good food plus four morale or plus four quality is good you get the the plus 12 morale from that um 5,000 calories is a lot it it doesn't actually go off very quickly it, it takes 16 cycles to go off but you're not using this as a space food you would rather use you would rather use other things as space food because it, it, it could still go off if you're not if you're not looking after it so I, I'm, I'm going to ignore that um yeah again it just comes down to opportunity cost do you really want to make a dedicated shovel ranch and dedicated off sprout room just to make curry beans probably not um so i'm gonna put this in the bottom of b tier uh one other thing to note about curry beans is it does give your dupes the hot stuff effect which gives them plus three athletics which is admittedly really good um and plus three strength which is which is fairly tangential to that um if you have new dupes eating this getting the plus three athletics it's pretty good but the issue is it comes with the plus one sneeziness and the sneeziness will get the dupes to stop what they're doing and sneeze uh, so they'll drop stuff over the place. They'll stop what tasks they're doing. Um, it does reduce their productivity. Um, overall, the effect is still good for new dupes, but if you've got experienced dupes that have high athletic skill, I don't think you're going to see much of an increase in productivity from them eating the curried beans. And it does give them extra stress as well when they eat it, but plus 5% is almost nothing. So generally, generally that's not going to be relevant. So I don't, I don't tend to think about it that much. But overall... I just don't think you're going to go for it. It's it's a good food, but you have easier options that are available. Like, why would you ever make curried beans over surf and turf? Like, you're already making surf and turf, just doing normal stuff in your base. Um, you're not you're not going out of your way to ranch shovels and grow nosh sprouts to make this. Uh, but it, it's certainly not awful. So I think the bottom of B tier suits it well. And then uh, finally, we have the last food. <laughs> which is plant meat um this does not come up very often it's it's poor so it only gives plus one morale and you get it from a satin critter traps after they've eaten a load of critters so you're not getting a lot of this even if you have a lot of satin critter traps and you're feeding them all of your excess critters to make a load of hydrogen you're very rarely getting this and it's not very good food um it's not it's not a food that it's it's kind of incidental to what you're doing, but it's never something that you're you want to prioritize feeding your dupes. Uh, so I think bottom of C tier makes sense for this again. There's no cooking recipe for this. You can't cook it into barbecue. I think they should let you cook this into barbecue. To be honest, I think that I, I think it's kind of weird that you can't. Um. So it so you can't cook it, and you just end up with such a little amount of it. It's not really very relevant. So, yeah. Yeah, this is basically it then. Um, I think that's my list. So, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those are overall my thoughts on which foods I tend to prioritize in Space Down. Um, barbecue and cooked seafood are so easy to get with ranching. Either a dedicated Paku tank that's like really easy to set up early on for the cooked seafood. Um, or just through your normal hatch Draco pit branches for the barbecue. Combining them with the gas range into surf and turf is super easy. And the plus 12 morale from this is almost the max bonus. And it's usually good enough for whatever your dupes are doing. So these are, in my opinion, the easiest food sources to get up and running. Uh, or the most worthwhile food sources to get up and running. Because you both, you both have the ease of production and the quality from the surf and turf. And then berry sludge is also in here because the quality is good. You get the plus eight morale from it and it never goes off. And having a food that never goes off is just absolutely invaluable for your rocket missions because you just fill all your rockets with berry sludge and never worry about it. And your dupes will get the plus eight morale. That'll make it really easy for them to stay in the rocket and do what they need to do. 
like if they're making loads of orbs of data or traveling long distances or what, what have you. Very important for the, the, it's quite important for the morale high ground achievement as well if you're trying to get that. Extra food morale from this is really good. Um, and then we have the A tier foods. So grub fruit preserve, pretty good rocket food. Uh, pretty easy to make if you have sulfur. If you have a sulfur source, you can make it long term. If you have a lot of sulfur in your wasteland biomes, you can make a decent stockpile of this um, and use it for your early game space travel. It's pretty good. Um, pepper bread and stuffed berries are pretty good end game foods that don't require ranches. Um, the the plus five, the, the plus sixteen morale from the pepper bread is significant. Um, stuff berry is easier to grow and plus four is still really good uh, so these are pretty easy to make end game foods that give you the quality you want and then uh, yeah so these these two really uh, uh, these two categories are really the foods I want to emphasize I would I would I would go for these most of the time over other food sources and then in B tier we have the ones that are situationally useful um, like the the mid game foods the uh the nosh sprout tofu um nosh sprout and lettuce related recipes and just the the other foods that don't perish and then c tier is foods that you, you generally shouldn't be prioritizing like like tofu without the pinch of pepper nuts or frost burgers or the pickle meal and then d tier is just for the raw ingredients that you shouldn't be eating or foods that are just actively harming your colony to make really early on yeah, that's my list. Let me know in the comments uh, if you uh, agree or disagree with my placements. Um, this is all subjective. This is mostly just based off of my experience playing this game. I'm sure you've all had different experiences. But uh, yeah, just something I wanted to talk about. So I usually stream on Twitch uh, most weekdays in the evenings, British time. We're currently doing um, a Flip Farters run where we have all flatulent and dupes and spaced out. We're having a lot of fun with that. Um, we have lots of other tier lists on the YouTube channel. Uh, we have tier lists for like the geysers, the duplicate traits, all the buildings in the game. So there's lots more content like this on my channel. So feel free to like those videos and subscribe if you like that sort of content. And then there's also the Discord channel where we come and hang out and post memes and builds. Um, so that's a, a good space where people usually respond to questions about this game as well. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, Hopefully I'll see you on Twitch soon. Bye for now.